also, I think you hit on this piece of crowdsourcing and I've been hearing this more and more with our clients as well as like some of the most meaningful content that they're putting out is actually sourced directly from their, their learners, from their community, because it's also resonating more with the people that it's being put out to. Um, we have clients that have, you know, created short videos with, you know, off of phones and then, you know, directly uploaded that. And those pieces of content are getting more views than anything else in the platform because people see this as like, this is authentic content. It's coming directly from the field and, and, and people are engaged with it because they may know the person in the video or they see themselves in those same shoes. And so I think that, you know, that is a piece of like develop content from the field. But I also think when people put in training content that they've, you know, read from different sources or pulled in from third parties, like sharing and doing that overall content sourcing and, and providing that to your community can really enrich that, that overall learning experience as well. Yeah. That's so funny to me because it's like, why wouldn't, why wouldn't the content you get directly from the learners be the most meaningful? Like to me, that's almost just common sense in a way, right? Like after someone has the fundamentals around something, they're going to go and apply it in their context. And that that's the part, again, like we tend to really have, it's a very small part of our portfolio as L and D is focusing on what happens after the first moment that someone learns something for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, most of our classes and courses and videos are based on learning things the first time. But after that, the learner takes it, they apply it in their workplace, and everything from that point on becomes super relevant, super contextual. And so other employees who are, by the way, often doing the same job, facing the same challenges in the same culture with the same clients, would, if you come back and say, like, hey, this is the most meaningful learning, it should be. Like, why are we pretending like, you know, we can go to one SME for those that level of asset? And, and I think what happens a lot is we try to cram everything into that one initial class or course. And that's something we really wanted to break through with LCD model is getting us out of that perspective of you've got to cram everything in this one class or course because this is the only shot you have with your learners. It's really look at your different learner personas and then find a platform that can help you um, tailor and curate and provide that for me. Like, you know, like on YouTube, you get those recommended pieces, right? Well, you know, if you design learner personas and you design, like, say you have a learner persona that's they already learned the fundamentals, they're way over here on their learning journey. And mm -hmm. you've collected these different learner employee stories well, that's a learning asset for that particular learner persona. Now you just need the technology to give it to them. But you as L&D may have decided already, okay, for these personas, this is what they need. I'm not going to bore them with all the rest because they don't need it and they're going to complain about it, right? <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, this is how I'm going to connect them to the resources they need. And it might not be a class. It might just be that single case study or directing them to a discussion um, on a comments page that employees were having about a topic that might become the asset. And that's very new thinking for L and D overall is use everyone's intelligence out there to inform you because the technology today can help you do that. Mm -hmm. You know, you really need both the model for designing learning and the technology to work hand in hand. Okay. And that's a lot of what we we see and we talk about with our clients is, hey, you might be investing in this technology, but if your mentality is still just delivering a class, you're not going to be able to get the ROI on your technology investment. And then meanwhile, if you've got people who are in this very modern learning uh -huh. model for designing, you know, for designing learning clusters, and they, they don't have technology that can really tailor to personas or build curated playlists or crowdsource, then you're kind of, you know, so you really got to I don't know if that makes sense, but it's really hand in hand, these kind of evolutions that we're trying to, to take.